And as this marks Ghana month, we're going to be bringing you more and more of those uh, this morning. Our focus on the central region. There's so much, you know, just watching these. There's so much that even we do not know within our country. How about we explore Ghana this month, but of course taking stock of COVID-19 protocols. Welcome back on the AM show. We talk energy matters now. It's something that concerns you. It concerns me. It concerns all of us. The main power supply challenges SMEs face in their operations relate to instability and high end user tariffs. The unreliability of conventional power from the grid results from power outages and fluctuations, which can lead to machine failure, your precious gadgets, and have adverse impact on SMEs and their productivity. So the main objective of this project is to contribute towards enhancing affordable renewable energy through interventions that will explore opportunities for renewable energy adoption by SMEs. So we're going to give you some energy conservation tips on the show today. We'll bring you some infographs on that. But joining us for the conversation, uh, policy lead, climate change and energy transition. Uh, I'm talking about Charles Ofori. He joins us from ASEP, the Africa Center for Energy Policy, and also Silvana Zuana, who is a policy analyst with ASEP. Lady, gentlemen, mm -hmm. good morning. Good morning, Renat. Thank you for uh, joining the conversation. So let's start from here. We're talking energy and how to conserve it. And of course, we're going to discuss it not just from the standpoint of SMEs. How about the person who doesn't own an SME or isn't in there? Surely. Individual levels as well. But what is renewable energy in the first place? Uh, Charles, I'll start with you. Okay, um, basically, renewable energy is just... Um, if you could um, as the speak name, up a bit. As the name goes, um, energy, the form of energy that is renewable. So energy that we can uh, actually trap from some of the natural occurring um, um, things in life. So the sunlight, the wind, um, we have the geothermal from even water. And these things um, come and then they are, they are, they are mostly renewed. Um, they, they don't get depleted. So as we trap the energy from it and use it to power um, gadgets, power equipment, and we continue to generate electrical power from them. Um, because of the fact that they do not deplete, we tend to call them as um, renewable energy. Okay, so interesting dynamics there when it comes to renewable energy. But what would you say sparked you know, this drive? Maybe I'll throw that to you, Silvana, this entire project that ASAP is embarking on. What, what triggered it? Okay, so as you rightly said at the beginning, we have past sector challenges mm. in Ghana that has to do with reliability and then the cost. But um, we have found renewable energy okay. to be cheaper in the long run. Mm. And so that is why we are advocating for this. So this project is actually in partnership with GIZ. And so we are trying to help SMEs adopt yeah. renewable energy yeah. for their operations. Right. And very interesting because we have loads of those in our country, the SMEs and you know, their contributions. If we're all able to save power, the dynamics would be different. But let me come uh, back to you, Charles. So, Renewable energy, SMEs, and all of that. And ASEP has decided to embark on uh, this drive. Do we have any statistics, any information, for example, about how renewable energy or how sustainability conscious we are in this country, even as far as SMEs are concerned? Do we have any statistics based on which you felt, let's embark on this drive? Okay, so generally there are no um, official statistics that cover um, such um, issues. But what we what we see generally is that the the level of renewable energy, and here I'm talking about small scale um, hydro and then solar um, and other wind um, renewable energy generation sources or technologies. Um, the the value of those um, the amount of those technologies in our mix um, that is the national electricity mix is quite low. Mm. I mean um, we have about um, 35 36 percent hydro and over 60 percent thermal, but we have less than one percent renewable energy within our energy mix. So wow. if you if you look at the the statistics on that general energy um, mix situation, then it's it's, it's quite low. Um, but we also look at the fact that um, how, whilst, whilst we wait for government to increase the, the level of renewable energy within its energy mix, 
what can SMEs also also do in their own small way in contributing to these effects of climate change and also um, importantly making a business case for them to see whether um, some of the challenges that we face when it comes to affordability and reliability of, of power supply mm -hmm. how do what role will rel um, renewable energy play in, in, in such an instance so um, we, we set out to identify the benefits that um, renewable energy will bring to an SME and then um, provide an avenue for SMEs to adopt these, these, these energy sources. And when we say adopt, you don't necessarily mean um, a full-scale transitioning, but um, some level of incremental transitioning where you have some um, um, gadgets within your, your systems being powered by renewable energy sources and other equipment being powered by um, conventional sources. And I think that is the way to go. Right. So we'll look at some of those mixes so that, yes, you could have the conventional sources, you could have your backup sources like solar and the rest. But why is it so important to be energy efficient in, in the first place? Why energy efficiency? Because, look, the Ghanaian example might be one that lends credence to the conversation we're having. We've experienced mm -hmm. times when we didn't have, we had extended power outages. Even now, yeah. we're going through yeah. some of it with some explanation. But in other parts of the world, maybe someone might be thinking, why do I even need to be energy efficient? Uh, Charles, what would you say to such a person? Um, I believe that if we are energy efficient, all of us contribute towards the goal of ensuring a sustainable environment and, and beyond um, the, the reduction in, in cost. I mean, someone may also say that um, saving a few kilowatt hours of, of, of electricity will not really give me a significant cost saving. But if each person or each household or each SME is able to save a kilowatt hour of energy, um, even per year, and we multiply, the multiplier effect is huge. It's going to really and significantly reduce the amount of CO2 emissions that is really being emitted into the atmosphere and also help sustain our environment. And this is the environment we have and we need to preserve it. Okay, so basically by being energy efficient, we also sustain our planet. Surely. Because whatever we do here has consequences, not just for us, but for Perfect. the entirety of the planet. L let me come to you. So when it comes to all of this bit about energy efficiency, the question is, how do I know whether in my business, in my home, I am being energy efficient? How, how do I know? I guess for some people it's just, oh, this is what <laughs> we've always done. We leave the TV on, we do this, or we turn it off. But how do I know? Okay, so energy efficiency, it has to do with a behavioral attitude as well. Okay. And mostly that aspect, we would term it as being energy conservation. So okay. based on your behavior, how you treat your appliances, whether you leave them on, whether you turn them off. All of those are indicators of whether you are being efficient or not. So for instance, okay. you live in the room, it's empty, you don't turn off the AC, you don't turn off the lights. All these amount cost. And so if you are being energy efficient, you will turn them off and then you save some money. Okay, so in other words, there are energy efficient practices yep. and there are energy deficient practices if i may i'm just quoting my <laughs> own words but it means some of us are practicing energy efficiency others yep. are practicing maybe energy deficiency but is it just limited to maybe turning off or turning on my gadgets for me mm. i barely watch tv when i watch tv is practically because of my work but usually these gadgets are off when i turn them on yeah. and when i'm done watching maybe the president addressing the nation or something i turn everything off the switches themselves go off so when i leave home you would practically have just the fridge or a few things at the main practically everything is off is that energy efficiency yeah. that is energy efficiency but beyond that mm. we also have to consider the type of appliance you use Okay. So these are the practices, but we also have to consider the equipment you would use or the appliances. Mm. So you would rather use an LED light bulb mm. or fluorescent light bulb, which is more efficient than an incandescent bulb. Okay. So you would also want to look out for appliances that have energy stars. So you want to buy a refrigerator. I mean, the higher the stars, the more efficient the equipment is. Right. So if you buy a refrigerator with five stars, 
it's more efficient than the one. So yeah, the very height because I think there yes. are five stars. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Some even have um, more more stars. Six, seven. Stars. I've seen some with more. Yeah. Now the technology is advancing and um, a lot of energy efficient um, equipment are coming in. So you could have six, even to ten stars. Yeah. And we'll be breaking it down, looking at core appliances that the ones that consume very little, the ones that consume a lot, and what we could be doing to ourselves. But how do you answer the person who says, you know, I have the money, I can foot my bills, and um, what is this thing about energy efficiency? Because I can pay, I can afford it, I can afford to leave the ACs on 24-7, now your money. What would you say to <laughs> such a person? Well, I mean, um one of the first things we talked about when we came was um, the fact about environmental sustainability and how each person's contributions would ensure that we all, I mean, contribute our quota towards the goal of ensuring environmental sustainability. Uh, secondly, um, also, you know that most of our electricity is supplied by um, our distribution companies, our utilities. Um, for the southern sector, we have ECG. For the northern sector, we have Netco. Netco, yeah. Right. Um, the more energy we, we consume, it, it leads to the more energy we demand. And that puts quite a, a lot of load on, on them in, in providing us with the energy demand. So, but, but we've been told, just to interject, that we have excess power supply, right? Yeah. So we might as well that use it. That, that, that is a conversation <laughs> that, 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 that may require a, a, a different time for us, for us to discuss um, into, into detail this. Right issue about excess power. But I'm talking about even the distributional capacity. We may right. have the, the, the generational capacity, but um, let's look at, let's say, the transformers and all of those um, equipment that will help us to distribute energy. I mean, if there are so much load on these um, transformer lines and, and all that, um, there will be so much um, pressure on the distribution um, company. So you see that sometimes doing so is not just about um, the fact that we don't have enough generational capacity. Sometimes if DUMSO is being, uh, is caused as a result of certain distributional imbalances or energy transmission imbalances, then you would have to talk about um, the load or ensuring that the equipment and the technology are available for the tra um, transmission and then the distribution side of the energy sector value chain is really enhanced to meet up, uh, meet the demand that, 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 that we want. So, if, bottom line, if we conserve enough energy, I think that um, it will put quite some minimal load on the distribution and the transmission um, um, side of the value chain and will help us in obtaining quite a more reliable supply of, 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 of power. Okay, so shortly on your screens as well, we'll bring you some uh, lists of items that consume the most and consume the least. Uh, but I would have you tackle both ends. I'll start with the least. Okay. Which are the household items that usually don't take, don't consume so much power? And you can talk to us about the ones that are, you know, the giants when it comes to electricity consumption. Uh, let's start with you, Sylvana. Okay, so we have fans. Fans. Okay. Yeah, fans don't really consume much electricity. Right. And, you know, even with the chargers, the chargers for our phones, mm -hmm. Well, it doesn't consume much. You know, I forgot about that one. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't seem to consume much. But if you plug it in and you, you do not connect it to the phone, but it's turned on, it still consumes power, you know. And so if cumulatively, so for a household, almost everybody does that. We have about five people doing that. Mm. I mean, look at the whole nation as uh, put it like broaden the perspective to the whole nation and everybody does that i mean little by little we we, we tend to waste so much little power. drops of wattage make exactly uh, and it, a small it's a huge energy burden on the country exactly hmm. exactly so you can see on your so, screens before Silvana goes on you can see on your screens uh, some of those it's a a bit of a breakdown of uh, what you should expect when you're using, for example, at the very bottom, yeah. LED or CFL light bulbs. Mm -hmm. That is what you're looking at, 18 to 15 watts. Uh, that is between what? Um, the kilowatt hours, 67 to 125 uh, hours. So that is what you'd be looking at. But yep. could you reiterate that bit you were saying there? I find it interesting because sometimes we leave, mm -hmm. we've finished using something like yep. the, the, the phone. You've mm -hmm. charged it, but you just disconnect, but it's... It's still in the dock. Yeah, same applies to TVs. You just pick the remote and switch it off, but you don't turn the power off from the wall. 
So the TV is on standby mode. It's still right. it's consuming power. Right. Okay. So Does it still consume at the same rate of when, uh, assuming it were on functioning? Or it's, it's at a lesser rate, but it's still consuming yes, power? Yes, it's still consuming power, even though it's at a right. lesser rate. So if you didn't know it, now you do. When you leave that you know, phone's charger in the dock, you're still consuming power. So imagine if you left it every day, you charge at home, mm -hmm. maybe you have two charges. Yeah. So you have one in your bag that you bring to work and another one at home. And the one at home, when you're done charging, you just leave it yeah. in there and it's still on at the socket. Yeah. Imagine what that would mean for about a month. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, energy and consumption is a function of um, the wattage as in um, the capacity of the equipment and also the time and um, mm -hmm. how long the equipment has been in. So um, you may say that, in fact, for example, um, the CFL lights and LED lights, the chargers that do not consume much. Even though they do not consume so much, if you leave it on for several hours, it, when, you, when you multiply that by the, by the time you, 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 you leave it on, that, that gives you quite um, a significant amount of, of power consumption for, for you, as whether you are a business or you are an individual. Um, at the house, at the business level, sometimes we we leave our um, ACs unattended to, and it's it's quite interesting that um, you have people wearing suits going to the office, put on their ACs to about 17 degrees, 16 degrees, and you could see they are shivering. Well, ACs have thermostats that could be regulated, let's say to 24, 25 degrees. Yeah. Wait, does it mean, what, for example, when it's at 24 or 20, let's even say 20, yeah. mm -hmm. it's consuming less than when it's at 16? Yes. Yeah. I mean, is that the idea? The, the, it's, it's a thermostat. So oh, the, the, the cooler you would, you would want your room to be, mm. the more energy you would, you would consume. It's just like the AC okay. in your car and the fuel consumption. I mean, right. the higher, the, the, the cooler, the more you freeze your car, the more you, 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 you consume fuel. Or train on and also train Yes. <laughs> right. so, so basically, it's, it's a function of time and also a function of the, the consumption, the capacity of the, of the gadget. So, okay. yeah. These practices that really tend to waste energy, sometimes there are so many things, as Sylvana was saying, leaving our um, charges, which most of us are corporates, leaving <laughs> our TVs on standby mode. Um, sometimes we charge overnight. And these charges usually take two to three hours to get fully charged, but we yeah. sleep for on average four to six hours. And yeah. so that's an it's, extra it's, two to three yeah, hours of, always of going of, mm -hmm. yes, and, into it. And, and even, I mean, this is um, even the, the, the device itself, we are, we, are, we are not really taking care of it so well, I mean, these, these practices. So I suppose this could apply to laptops and the rest as yes, well. Yes, yeah. it does. Wow. So, so these things are very important for, for us to, to, to take note of. Yeah. Okay. So are you done with the low-end gadgets? You spoke about fans, maybe phones as well. Which other ones are low consumption before I come to the high end? Okay. So, well, as you rightly said, the, the one at the bottom of the list we have is the LED bulbs. Okay. Okay. So even with those ones, well, let me put some figures to it. LED bulbs are efficient bulbs, right? Okay. But if you should turn it on for a whole day, so let's take a 38 watt LED bulb. Mm. For a whole day, um, it could cost you 60 pesos. Right. As low as 60 pesos. Right. But let's consider the fact that you may have five of those. You say as low as, but even 60 well, pesos. It's not so cheap. By seven days, by 30 exactly. days. You exactly. Exactly my point. Quite just one bulb. Yeah, exactly my point. So if you have five of those, that's like three wow. cities, right, in a day. And then you do a week. You're running into 20, over 20 cities for five bulbs. So consider the cost for a year. That's that would over be 21 thousand. CDs a week. That would be. You know? Almost 100 CDs a month, just yeah. on a light bulb. Yes. And these are energy efficient bulbs we, we are talking about here. So how about the non-energy efficient ones? Then that one, <laughs> that one. I guess, <laughs> La Ou. <laughs> <laughs> La Cry, that's what would happen. OK, yeah. so let's talk now about the, high, the heavy duty uh, ones, even at home, and yeah. the ones that we can also take stock of. Because we're putting both of them together because in your office, for your business, your small scale business and at home we are usually using the same gadgets now nowadays people have fridges acs mm -hmm. all of those things, even kettles in their kitchens microwaves so all of these things we're talking about that we find in our homes are also being 
duplicated or replicated yeah, in our offices. So it's, it's the same thing. Let's talk about the higher ones. Yeah, so as you could see from the, from the screen, um, some of the consumption bans were, were placed in, in, in red colors and others were placed in, in, in a lighter color. So mm. the ones at the top, you could see um, electric cookers, um, ACs consume so much electricity. And um, its wattage, its um, unit um, consumption rate is, is, quite, is quite high. So if you multiply it by the, by the number of hours these equipment will stay on, that gives you a very high end um, electricity usage. Um, microwaves and kettles, um, those smaller, smaller units that um, they are quite cheap on the market, but we sometimes we don't suspect that they consume so much. Um, they consume about um, that's that's about a thousand watts um, energy capacity. So it's deadly. Yeah, if you deadly for your it, pocket. Yeah, <laughs> if you use, if you use this one for an hour, that gives you a thousand watt hour. That is equivalent to one kilowatt hour, and that's that's one unit of electricity being used. And in, in as as we, we we talk about in the Ghanaian parlance. Rice cooker seems quite innocent, but it's, it's also um, largely um, mm. a huge consumption, um, so 800 watts. Um, blender is also um, seems innocent, but as you can see, it's even more, more, more consuming that, than um, the, the, the refrigerators and the deep freezers that, 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 that we have. Wow. Yeah. So imagine leaving these um, gadgets on, on standby and... But, but hold it right there, um, Charles. Let's look at the blender. You're looking at three hours of using it. No, so, so right? what, what, what this one's um, the time talks about is how long these gadgets would take to consume a unit of electricity. So okay. how long does it have to be on for you to consume a kilowatt a unit. hour, which is a unit of, 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 of electricity? You know that in Ghana, we, we consume our electricity based on kilowatt hour measures. So one unit is equivalent to one kilowatt hour of electricity. Okay. And Yes. So for the blender, what it means is it, it takes three hours. Yes. It takes about three hours of, of, of um, yes, working time to consume a unit of electricity. That's right. Given the, the, the power, the, the, the wattage, mm -hmm. um, you can have more efficient um, blenders, but on the average, these are the kinds of um, wattages we see on the market. Okay. That so is why it's, it's, it's important that you, you also look out for the energy star rating to buy more efficient um, uh, electronic um, apparatus. Well, for computers and television sets, it's a bit low. Uh, you would realize that the killer there is the electric cooker, and especially the ACs as well. And then right beneath that, microwaves and kettles. Yeah. yeah. Let's talk about tips. How can we be energy efficient? especially in our setting where renewable energy is not so easy to come by, so to speak. So maybe you can wrap up with renewable energy, what we can do in our businesses and in our homes, and um, you would address the, the other angle when it comes to the tips, what we can do. Okay, so if you have an AC, I would recommend that you make sure you have airtight doors so that you don't allow for air to come in. I mean, it's supposed to be enclosed. Now, you turn off lights when you do not need them. You turn off ACs when you do not need them. You put off the switches on the walls, not simply putting off, say, the TV with a remote. Right. And then there's also the bit about our fridges and refrigerators. Opening it, the, the more often you open it, that's when it consumes more. Don't even open, leave it open, leave it you're doing open. something. People do that sometimes. You know? <laughs> and I have a friend, I didn't want to say this, but I think I should say <laughs> it. I have a friend who has a photograph of everything in his fridge. So he takes a snapshot of what is in the fridge so that when he opens, he knows what to pick. He knows where to pick it so that he doesn't Whoa. stand by the fridge for so long, <laughs> you know? That's interesting. And so, yeah. So these tiny or these little little practices that we we tend to be oblivious of we we tend not to be so conscious about i think it's about time we we started paying attention to those ones yeah. and that can save you a lot in terms of your pocket let's wrap up with uh renewable energy what we can do on the individual and collective level yeah so basically um energy transition has come to stay and um, renewable energy is, is really in the market. Um, a lot of companies um, supplying renewable energy in bulk and, and there are so many payment protocols that you need, you can, you can do in order to even pay for, for that. Um, 
for a household who may not be able to afford or for an SME that may not be able to afford um, let's say the perceived high upfront um, cost um, towards installing renewable energy I think that you could start on a very incremental basis um, some few kilowatts our some few kilowatts of capacity renewable energy capacity and as you um, improve on, on your systems, you would, you would increase it and you use it alongside the conventional energy um, sources. I think that that's, that leads us to, um, first of all, reduce our, our costs and also kind of ensure some level of um, energy efficiency in, 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 the things that we, in the things that we do. Okay, so finally, to cap it all off, the Africa Center for Energy Policy has started this project. We've delved a bit into it. Mm -hmm. I just want you to finally remind all of our viewers about what this policy is. What should they be looking forward to? Yeah, so um, basically, we would also be coming out with um, a guide for SMEs in okay. assessing, accessing renewable energy technologies. Um, you look at the market, you would um, look at um, the places where they can um, get some of these technologies. You look at some of the financial options that are available for them to adopt renewable energy. And we have financial institutions who have really cool green financing deals that can help them to provide this adoption. So we are, we are generating a simple guide very practical and easy to use guide that will be able to spell out all of these things and it will be ready um, within this month and i, I think you should and it will be accessible to the SME. accessible to everybody um, this is uh, asap giz collaboration and i believe that it is going to be something that will be beneficial for smes will be beneficial for individuals and will also be beneficial for even the renewable energy market as well um, for us to all promote and then ensure and a more sustainable environment that we live in. So let's conserve energy and let's make our country, well, even in the pocket, let's make our country better individually and collectively. I want to say a very big thank you to uh, Charles Ofori, Policy Lead, Climate Change and Energy Transition, and Silvana Zuana, Policy Analyst with ASAP. Ladies, gentlemen, thank you for joining the conversation. You're so welcome. Thank, thank you for you. having us. <laughs> so from here,